Recording in progress. So, the little exercise that I have for you folks today is a kind of a little mini composition, really, I suppose, that hopefully we're going to build lots of different things from. It's got a very nice picking pattern, but it's very chordal based so if you're more of a rhythm player or you you know you want to focus on that or even you want to just stick playing with a plectrum that's going to work quite nicely as well uh, let's have a look at the tab first and it might actually seem a little overwhelming at first so please don't panic um whoa i mean there's some crazy chord names isn't there uh, e minor 11 flat nine slash D. Don't worry, that's really just uh, Guitar Pro giving it a silly name and me being too lazy to give it maybe a more logical one. Um, but it's constructed out of a bunch of chords and as you can see there's some lovely finger picking going on. Uh, let's just make it a little bit nicer to view for you there. So it's got a nice little bounce to it. sections okay so that's very much the sort of finger picking element to it but strumming with it is going to be really nice as well going to be some other alternative chord voicings and we'll look at some rhythmic stuff as well okay so I mean that's a hell of a lot isn't it And we probably will end up just covering the C chord and then the hour will nearly be up um, in reality but I'll do my best all right let's get proper started shall we let's just focus on these first two bars up here okay ignore the rest of it now as always it's for absolutely every ability so the tendency here is for the absolute sort of guitar legends of which there are many of you um you all sort of want to run on and do everything else but it's really super super helpful to stick back and hold there because you'll get so much from working on the simplicity of it it's when we work on the basic stuff it's the opportunity for the beginner guitarist to really understand what's going on and it for the advanced guitarist it's an opportunity to master stuff and make it sound amazing so these first two bars there are three chords basically three different versions or voicings of C all right we're not going to think about finger picking and right hand at all here we're just going to look at the chords first a C major chord which is pretty self-explanatory I reckon and I reckon we're all cool with that if we're not you can see how it's there and you can see how I'm fingering it here now C and 9 comes in halfway through the bar all we have to do to get there is put our little finger on the third fret on the B string okay so you've got your C and your little finger goes to the third fret I have a real problem when TH and F are next to each other uh, anyway it goes down and then we've got the C and 9 it's a beautiful and very widely used chord change if you're a more advanced player, you might have even forgot about that wonderful little chord change. 
Now, our third chord is, I've just called it C version two. Really, what this has come from is a C7 bar chord. And just with the bar lifted off, so we end up with this. Which sounds very, very similar, because it is in fact just the C major chord to the first one. However, there's a reason for it, which I'll get to in a minute. But right now, we're just all learning the chords. So, to play that chord note for note, we've got a kind of a power chord first. We've got first finger, third fret, A string, third finger, fifth fret, D string, okay? That's the main bit of the chord going on there, okay? And then what's happening after that is we've got our little finger on the B string, fifth fret. Okay, and we've got open G and open E. Now, it's gonna really help you if you can sort of curve your fingers so they're like a bridge rather than, you know, pointing at an angle so that those strings can ring out nicely. We're not worrying about finger picking at this point, remember, we just want the chord. Okay, I'm gonna take the tab away for a second. You're welcome to screenshot that, by the way, at any point. Uh, stop sharing, here we go, okay, cool. So as I said, we're not talking about the right hand or the picking hand, we're just looking at the chords for now. We've got our C chord, our C add nine, and our second C chord, all right? Now, why have I got these two versions of C major? It's because I wanna create a bit of a melody, all right? Now, that can be quite familiar to finger picking, you know picking out a melody really makes a lot of sense but from a rhythm perspective as well it's a really nice little trick and actually you can apply this to a million different songs that you play that might have a C in it all of a sudden you've got a C chord there's no other magical notes in there but just by playing those two different voicings we've all of a sudden got a bit of melody Okay, so let's just get used to how it works in this sequence. Well, we've got our C chord for half a bar, our C add nine for half a bar, and then our C version two for a whole bar. So we're just gonna strum it in the sort of rhythmic um, division so that everything starts to make sense. We've got a nice foundation. So we'd have one, two, three, four, So C, C at nine, and C version two, three, four, and C. Two, three, four. So just strumming through, but notice we're always missing off that low E string. C, C at nine. doing this for a while because if we don't have the foundations nailed then it's not really much fun for anyone thing is if by doing that a few times maybe you're more of a beginner guitarist and actually getting to this chord up here uh, is a little bit of a headache you can just go back to C if you want Two, three, four. so if you want to play along with this okay that's going to work fine so just going C C and 9 C Okay, because part of this is very much just being able to play along. You can always master stuff later. So to recap, we've got three chords. And we've 
also discovered as an easier way to play that, we can just play C, C add 9, C. Okay, I'm going to do that round twice now, just to cement it, and then we'll move on. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and C. Go back to the tab for a little second so we're not going to move on to any of the other chords we're just going to stick here and we're going to start working on the picking pattern now there's a lot going on some of you will actually find this pattern quite familiar but there is still a lot going on so we're going to do it bit by bit and we're going to start off with just playing the first note or first beat because actually the first beat of each chord has two notes the first beat of each chord, okay? Now, conveniently, in our right hand, that's going to be the same thumb and finger each time. It's gonna be our thumb and middle finger. You don't have to do this, all right? You can play it in your own little way, but this is sort of Chris's way of doing it. So we've got thumb and middle finger on A and B, okay? And you can just hold down each chord and just play A and B. If you're doing the easier version where you're just playing the C, that's fine, it still works exactly the same. One more time. Nice, okay, cool. Now we're gonna add in the next note of each chord. So we've got the first two notes of each chord, which conveniently, it's almost as if I've planned this, I'm playing the A and the B together, and then my thumb plays the D string. That's the same on each chord, okay? So it means we end up with this. slow it down a little bit I know that seemed crazy because if you're a really advanced player I would like you to play with the accent here all right we're gonna really be messing with this a little bit later when we get into the rhythm so try bizarrely making the and much stronger more beginner player just try and work through it and I said we're gonna slow it down so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three if you advance play with the Lovely. All right, now we're going to put in the third note of each chord, okay? And that's going to be your index finger on the G string every time, okay? So we're going thumb and middle, thumb, index. So for the first chord, for the second chord, third chord. Nice and simple. So it should be one and two and three and four. One and two and three four. One, two, three, four. Two,
advanced players, see if you can play with the accents. Maybe make that G nice and strong. start really speeding up now and we're going to put our thumb on to the A string okay so we're going two together thumb index thumb but the thumb comes back to the A so that first chord we have okay and that will be the same for each one Okay, next we're going to put the fourth note. No, we're not. One, two, three, four. The fifth note in, all right, which is the first time we're using the middle finger on its own. So after playing that thumb on the A string, our middle finger is going to play the B. So we end up with this. beginner guitarist at this point I might have lost you a little bit please don't worry okay you can come back and you can work on it bit by bit but we just need to start to speed up a little bit so that we've got something for absolutely everyone okay if you're more of a beginner guitarist to be able to play along then maybe just even just playing those first two notes Okay, it's going to be great to do because it gives you the experience of playing in time and just makes you such a better musician. But for um, all the other ability levels, then see if you can put in that middle finger. So we should have this. Count that in one and two and three and four and one. Ooh, sorry, three and four again. Finally, filling it up for the whole chord. We then come back with our thumb to play the D string. It's the same on every single chord, all right? What's crucial here is that when you play that note, it lasts that little bit longer, which is quite easy to do because we're changing chords. So it gives you your brain a little bit of a gap as well. So we end up with... a very familiar Travis picking pattern for some of you but for some of you maybe not so much we're gonna play it around uh, just loop it around for a little bit beginners if you just want to do that's totally cool just play along try and keep with the changes if you know you're sort of 
um, intermediate and up, then you're very welcome to you know play along with the whole pattern. We'll keep it relatively slow. If you're more advanced, what would be nice is if you could emphasize on that and of one and three. So lovely bounce and if you wanted to even experiment with strumming of it ba, ba, ba. oh hey Lucy don't worry at all you're very welcome it's not a problem um, if you want to experiment with strumming of it as well which we're going to go into a little bit more later it can be really nice if you can emphasize the and as well we get this lovely sort of push and pull between the picking and the strumming or if you're doing picking like this it will give us a bit of a push and pull so if you're a super advanced see if you can emphasize that and of one and three it just brings it to life a bit I'll shut up and we'll just play it in a loop for a while all right and um, we'll just have it up there for you to see I think I've done far, far too much, or just right, or I don't know. Either way, I've talked a lot. So let's just play it round and round, just those two bars, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with. Or maybe you're trying to make yourself feel a bit uncomfortable with your playing, so whatever you feel comfortable or uncomfortable with. Here we go. One. Okay, now let's talk about playing rhythm over that a little bit. Um, I mentioned it very um, briefly there. Um, and remember, I'm gonna feel free to screenshot this. I'm gonna just take it away for a second. Um, if you wanted to play some rhythm over that, a really nice way of working is to emphasize that and. So how I would suggest you did that is by having a smaller downstroke at the beginning, aiming for those bass strings, and then on the and, a nice strong downstroke. So one and. You can even practice by going one and. Now, because it's kind of a 16th -y feel, it can also help to put a tiny up before the down. So. So you get a little up, down, down. As you 
get more confident than just dusting with a 1E and a 2E and a, at the end of just down and up can be really nice. <laughs> Maybe that's more for more advanced players perhaps I don't know it's just something to, to have a go with anyway it's a little bit different um, cool okay so we're gonna go around again and if you want to give that a little go maybe you want to mix between the picking and then the strumming Hopefully, if you're more of an advanced player, you might start mixing with emphasizing that and and the finger picking as well. Or maybe just getting through playing the chord sequences enough. Who knows? All right, let's go through a couple more times. I'll get that tab up for you again. Where's it gone? There we are. Okay, here we go. So one and two and three and four and... Excellent. Um, right, we've covered um, a lot of ground here. Um, where have we been? Uh, we've got the basics of the chords, the C, C add nine, and then I even said, didn't I just go back to that C? That's totally cool. That's gonna work beautifully. We've looked at using that third C. We've looked at the picking pan. We talked about the rhythm. And when I talked about doing a rhythm part over it, I suggested you emphasize the and, which matches, which we can also apply in the picking. Now, if you're super duper, I don't 
don't want to say clever, um, but uh, well, come on, I'll say it. if you're super duper clever, you could start thinking about trying to shift the melody as well. So you could play the melody note on the and if you wanted to, you could go. Okay, and that's kind of a nice uh, exercise to do as well if you're a little bit more advanced because you can see like where the melody note is. Let's actually take a look at where that melody note is before we move on to the next bits. So essentially we've got a melody note here. Oh, let's do the annotating thing, shall we? We've been doing Zoom long enough for this to be a natural thing, haven't we? <laughs> Come on, Chris. So we've got a melody note here, here, here just on the B string really all right so that that is our melody I'm just gonna play the melody on its own all right it's not you know the greatest melody in the world didn't say it was but it's still a melody all right and we've got the chords are there and we've got this rumbling away boom, 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 boom. Then we've got some filler in the middle, which is our G, right? Uh, let's do that in a different colour. Wow, how exciting is this? Uh, so we've got the sort of filler in the middle, which is our, our G with our index finger. Uh, so if you like, I don't know how will we see that. That's our kind of our droney chord. So we've got... We've got our bass. Uh, I think they're going to have a nice green. Uh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. It just looks ridiculous, doesn't it? But actually, it kind of makes sense to me. I hope it does make sense to you. It doesn't look like just someone's drawing over a screen excitedly, which is basically what is happening, of course. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so that's the bass. So the bass and the green. Uh, what is it? One and two and uh, one and two and three and four and so if we were to split this up into a guitar orchestra of sorts which some of you are very familiar uniquely familiar in the world of playing in that setting and we would go bass guitarist one and two and three And then we'd be like, well, let's have a droney middle section, have a pretty boring job, and you would be going, oh, what would you be going? One and a, oh, you'd be going one and a. Just on a G, it'd be a pretty boring job. And then your lead guitarist at the top would be going, one and However, we can remove all the logistical challenges that come with bring, taking a guitar orchestra around the country and do this. Much cheaper, much more practical, but essentially lonely and not as fun. But hey, we work with what we got, don't we? So there you go, that's a nice little breakdown of it, wasn't it? Um, let's just clear all that because it just looks a bit silly, doesn't it? Um, excellent. Okay, so now I think is the time to move on to playing it all over the place because if you remember, it's a bit of a composition. Okay, so we got this bit. Going to go around four times. I'll do it twice here because you've heard it enough. Then we go to this. And we all feel very happy and warm and fuzzy inside I'd say. Now the wonderful thing is, is it's the same picking pattern over and over again. I know. Um, we, we only really change strings slightly just on those last two chords. So we don't need to learn any more picking pattern. Excellent. Everyone's happy. However, we do have to learn some 
or one new chord really before we get to this end bit so the one new chord is this if you're familiar with a d minor seven played on the fifth sixth and seventh fret life's going to be super 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 easy for you because all you have to do is play that d minor seven and then lift off the bar and you get this utterly gorgeous chord nice huh However, if you don't know that, I'll just tell you note by note. We get our first finger and we put it on the fifth fret on the A string. Okay, and then we get our third finger and put it on the seventh fret on the D string. Then we get our second finger and put it on the sixth fret on the B string. Now, if you're a beginner guitarist, that's going to be super tough. There are ways around it. You could just play a little power chord. So covering the fifth fret on the A string and seventh fret on the D. Or don't worry about it. Maybe just leave this bit and leave it for the more advanced players, all right? It's not a problem. You can always come back and look at the video later, can't you? So we've got first finger, fifth fret, A string, third finger, uh, seventh fret, D string, second finger, sixth fret, B string. And you literally do the same finger picking pattern again. our changes a little quicker so we do half a bar here then we go down to our C version 2 okay, I'm moving a little quicker more for the advanced players so please don't worry if this is all going over your head okay we go uh, and do that twice time we do a tiny little variation we start the pattern we put our little finger on the eighth fret on the B string and then we go down and then we do that again so we get this tiny variation okay that's that whole section we play it one more time and then I get the tab up for you okay here we go let's get the tab up so we've done this bit we've all mastered this bit nice and now we're on to this bit now you can see these ridiculously named chords i said don't worry about that didn't i right at the beginning so here's the main bit that you want to master you can see it's two chords that's our sort of our d minor seven we do that twice okay it's the same finger picking pattern again nothing's changing once you've done that twice that's when the little variation comes on so it's really worth just nailing those two bars first okay hmm. now if you want to do the little variation all that you'll notice has changed is this one little note, which is here. So we can mirror it, right? We can look at the bar above to see that the six and the eight has changed. So the pattern in the right hand is exactly the same. All we've done is we've put our little finger on the eighth fret on the B. What makes it a little confusing is it's kind of halfway through the pattern. our right hand stays the same to our ears it almost sounds like the right hands change but that is not the case it's just that little finger coming in there okay so we've got those two bars put together in its entirety should sound right 
Cool. Okay. So I'm trying to gauge where we're all at here. I think some of us are sort of getting through there. Yeah. So we've only got one last little bit to work through now if we want to play it as a whole piece. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is more of a sort of intermediate advanced piece in its entirety. So if you want to play the whole thing, it's, it's like a challenging thing, all right? So the first two bars, that's there for everyone, really. And we're going to go round and play that towards the end, just round and round to enjoy it. But if you want to do the whole piece, all right, then it's, you know, it's, it's quite a challenge, I'd say. So looking at these last bars, we have this. Okay. Now, actually, in principle, it's pretty simple because it's just the same idea. It's just, just chords moving in the same sort of rhythmic pattern. And in our right hand, we're actually playing the same rhythm. But what's different is that we have to switch around a little bit what strings we're using. Let's look at the chords first. We've got F major 7, which is like a lazy F, really. It's like an F chord, but we just lift up. And we've got the open E. Then we had F add 9, not F9, F add 9, where our little finger comes down onto the third fret on the E. Beautiful chord. And then we go to a G6 and 11, which is a real favorite of mine. What it is, is it's basically a C chord, right? But you've just taken your second and third finger and moved it to the A and E string. And then where it says G, you don't have to form a whole G, just take off your first finger. Actually playing those chords as they are. isn't it okay well actually let's do that one more time so F major 7 F add 9 G6 add 11 G don't get hung up on the names call them what you want lazy F F with little finger kind of like a G or a C and then first finger away call them Bob Richard, Steve, and Annabelle. Right, it's definitely an Annabelle chord. That's not a Bob, is it? That's maybe Steve. Right, let's not digress too much. So when it comes to the picking pan, oh, can you show the G in bigger view? I presume you mean this bigger view. That's it, cool. Okay, like this. So it's like a C chord, but with these two fingers moved ahead. Okay. There we go, fantastic. Um, good, so let's just pop back to the tab. Um, Picking pattern, it's exactly the same, but we end up sticking around. Uh, we start using different strings, okay? So first off, we're using our thumb and middle again. That's nice and familiar. And then our thumb again. But what's different here is that our thumb stays on the same string. Okay, and then up with the index, down with the thumb, staying on that string again. Back to the middle finger again. That makes a nice amount of sense. Back to our thumb. Now, at the beginning of the F add nine, we're playing with our thumb and ring finger for D and E. But everything else continues the same. As we get to the G, things change up again. We're playing the E and the B at the beginning. And E and B when we get to the sort of more normal G chord as well. Cool. Well, I won't spend too long on that because I think if you're a more advanced player, you could probably work out some of those bits and bobs for yourself. 
Uh, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So if you want to take a, rather than me send this to you afterwards, if you want to screenshot it, you're very, very welcome to do that. Ta-da! Give you a few seconds to sort of remember how to screenshot. Thanks, Ian, that's great. Um, if you're really struggling, I can, well, you could screenshot it from the YouTube video or I can email it to you, it's not a problem. Um, great, okay, so let's have a, a quick recap of the whole piece. I'm gonna recap it chordally, all right? So we've got a C, C add nine, C version two. We do that four times round. Then we go to this sort of D minor seven type thing, which is in the tab written as E minor 11 flat nine slash D, which just, you know, sounds so cool, doesn't it? Uh, so we go back down to our C version two. We do that twice. Then we have our little uh, change where we have, that's written as D sus four add nine, which is a relatively catchy title. E minor 11 flat nine slash D again. Then to finish we have our cool. Hopefully you can hear that actually this works quite well as a chordal exercise. is because of all these lovely little subtle variations of voicings mainly C two different versions of C they kind of sound the same but when we play them in some kind of rhythmic order it becomes a bit of a melodic thing right what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around the whole piece twice with finger picking you're welcome to join in however you want and then I think we'll finish the session just going around the first two bars and uh, look at some ways that we can have some fun with that and just sort of finish off with a jam. So first of all, playing through the whole thing and uh, we'll take it from there. So whole thing, uh, one, two, and three, and four, and... Did that let's move on cool all 
right, nice. Well, let's finish off with just going around that first bar. Which is a great opportunity for everyone of all abilities just to play along together. If you want to mix it up, some ideas for mixing it up are putting in the rhythm where we emphasize on the and. As I talked about that up, little down, down. Okay, and then for finger picking, if you want to emphasize on the and. And if you want to be super, super duper tricky and put the melody on the and. And if you fancy a bit of a noodle. My B string hates me. It has for a decade. Um, if you want to just noodle around, then take a C major scale. with that or if you're not familiar with the scale just take a few notes I would suggest playing on the B string where we've got open one three five and then maybe give yourself six as well and you could really make some beautiful melodies endless fun with that anyway cool let's just go around a fair few times for a few minutes i hope you enjoy it so one two and three four i'll slow it down a bit sorry i got a bit overexcited Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming back. Um, it's lovely to be back. I hope you enjoyed that little session. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I certainly, I certainly enjoyed it. And hey, Tony, you've got something to say, mate, haven't you? You've got um, look. Yeah, Tony, Tony's going to try and sell you something. It's not insurance. Um, Tony, you have to unmute yourself, buddy. Um, Go on, you got the floor. This is, uh, two of these. Oh, hold on a minute. Can I have one? One A in Martin, Martin Guitar. Guitar. Plus a case. Sorry, including a case. Including a case. Yeah, the word plus gets very confusing, know, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Includes a case. The hard case, case yeah. yeah. Cracking. What? Speak, 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 speak to me, direct, direct message, message or something. Direct message or something. Okay, cool. I mean, you could put your email in the chat if you wanted to. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're flogging your Martin Exus. 
Tony, why are you doing? Are you giving up acoustic guitar? No, no, no. Um, giving up acoustic and retaining the just removing possession. The boat's gone, the motorbike's gone, the car's gone, and the caravan gone. Oh my god! Too much responsibility. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, this is the thing. Yeah. You're, yeah you don't. Responsibility is never a good thing, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> Well, wonderful. All right, man. Well, um, you may, maybe put it in there, but yes, it's the same as my guitar, isn't it? It's a, it's an X series, basically, X one, yeah, yeah. which is very lovely. Um, and you can email Tony about it. And hey, there, there we go. go. There you go. There's Tony's email if you would like to purchase it. Thank you, Tony, sir. Um, good luck with shedding your responsibilities. Um. <laughs> 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 and Je Je reminded me of this one from Pearl Jam. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Uh, awesome, James. I'll check that out. Um, two lovely. Is, is that a thing? Yeah. That, that, 